listening to me, Neil? Or were you looking at the woman in the red dress? I was... Look again. A few years ago, uh, before the pandemic, getting really fascinated uh, by flat earthers and trying to understand sort of the thinking behind them of people who decided actively to create an identity for themselves that was to just clearly reject um, what science, you know, settled thousands of years ago with the ancient Greeks. Um, and that there's no real contrast to it. It's more of an identity thing rather than a reasoning thing. And to have people sucked into that, just, it was fascinating to try and see what it was all about. And then, of course, you know, we went on to understand the phenomenon of, of anti-vaxxers and, and anti-science and anti-skeptics and this rise in these echo chambers that are validating this kind of thinking in ways that have real consequences. It ends at the water's edge. Well, thank God they weren't around back in 1492. Imagine the hard time they've given Christopher Columbus. Voices on the right and left are working right now to breathe life into those old flat earth theories of protectionism, of isolationism, that there is no going back. Our new world is far smaller, communications far more instant, our horizons stretch much, much farther with each generation. This is 1991, not 1791. Horse and buggy attitude won't carry us into the next century. And we will knock down barriers wherever we find them, to open markets, for instance, for our computer software, movies, books, and pharmaceuticals. We will fight hard against protectionism, both at home and abroad. And five centuries ago, a man of courage and, and uh, vision set sail from Europe, searching for new trade routes and opportunities. And he defied the timid counsel of those who said the earth was flat. Christopher Columbus's voyage to the Americas transformed human history. Columbus was an entrepreneur and the risk he took 500 years ago continues to pay off abundantly today. And today we still have to combat the flat earth mentality, the mindset that urges us to barricade our borders against competition, to shut off the free exchange of food and machinery and skills and ideas. I want to be clear, I am willing to work with anybody, Republicans, Democrats, Independents, Libertarians, Greens, anybody to combat this threat on behalf of our kids. I am open to all sorts of new ideas, maybe better ideas, to make sure that we deal with climate change in a way that promotes jobs and growth. Nobody has a monopoly on what is a very hard problem, but I don't have much patience for anyone who denies that this challenge is real. We don't have time for a meeting of the Flat Earth Society. If I say that the world is round and someone else says it's flat, that's worth reporting. But you might also want to report on a bunch of scientific evidence that seems to support the notion that the world is round. We're trying to move towards the future. They, they want to be stuck in the past. And we've heard this kind of thinking before. Let me tell you something. If some of these folks were around when Columbus set sail, <laughs> they, 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 they must have been founding members of, of the Flat Earth Society. They, they would not have believed that the world was round. I got fascinated with the idea of flat earthers. Now this is an entirely new phenomenon. There wasn't really any moment back in recorded history, not the ancient Greeks or the ancient Babylonians or the Incas or whoever else, who actually wondered whether the earth was actually flat or not. 
and Christopher Columbus, they knew the earth was round. There was no danger he was going to fall off the edge of the world. That wasn't what people worried about when he was setting off to discover the Americas or discover a shortcut to India. Um, but recently, over the past few years, a whole bunch of people have decided that the world is flat. Now, everything we know about science, from the people we've sent to the moon, uh, to the photos we've taken from space, to how we explain day versus night and seasons, we know that the Earth is round. But there, there are a whole bunch of people out there who have decided that the Earth is flat. The idea that the Earth is a flat disk or plane first comes from most ancient civilizations, including Egypt and Greece. Most of the ancient cultures believed that the Earth was flat. The same ancient cultures that build the pyramids and seem to have more knowledge about our world and universe than we do today. They believe rising sea levels don't matter because in their view the extra water is just going to spill out over the sides of a flat of a flat of a flat earth of a flat earth of a flat earth of a flat flat earth flat earth flat earth flat earth earth earth. You don't need to be a scientist. You don't need to be a scientist. You don't need to be a scientist to know that the earth is round, to know that the earth is round, to know that the earth is round, that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west, and that gravity is the reason that objects fall to the ground. You could pick a hundred different examples of simple things that happen every day that reflect science. And we need to make clear that those members of the Flat Earth Society, the Flat Earth Society, the Flat Earth Society, the Flat Earth, the Flat Earth, the Flat Earth, the Flat Earth Society, are on the long side of history, of history, of history, are on the long side of history. They, 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 they must have been founding members of, of the Flat Earth Society. Flat Earth Society. Flat Earth Society. Flat Earth Flat Earth Flat Earth Flat Earth Society. They, they would not have believed that the world was round. We don't have time for a meeting of the Flat Earth Society. Flat Earth Society. Flat Earth Society. Flat Earth, Flat Earth, Flat Earth, Flat Earth Society. My friends, these people are so out of touch with science. You don't need to be a scientist to know that the Earth is round. Where is the curvature? Where? No curvature. This UN House of Darkness is home court. They know that in this swamp of anti-Semitic bile, there's an automatic majority willing to do, demonize the Jewish state on anything. In this anti-Israel, flat earth society, any false charge, any outlandish allegation can muster a majority. In this anti-Israel, flat earth society, Flat Earth Society.